I will say Joe Biden um, in a speech in Pittsburgh turned around and I think uh, I think that this is actually good. This this one part here from Joe Biden's campaign, I think, is is good. I mean, obviously, I've had a lot of criticisms of Joe Biden's campaign. We've talked about him, but this part here was good, specifically saying he pointed out. I can't remember the exact quote off the top of my head. I'd have to look it up. But he was basically saying, like, look, dude, Donald Trump, you're talking about law and order. You're talking about law and order. But you're the president. You're the president. You are right. the law and order right now. Right. How is Donald Trump going to turn around and say law and order? He is the law and order. If there's lack of law and order, damn it, that's your fault. That's your fault. And Joe Biden should hammer right. that in. I think he should hammer that in. Now, he should always, like we were just saying, clarify that and explain how, look, you know, if we want to address the protests, you have to address the cause of the protests in the first case, right? right. That's how you exactly. truly fix the problem. And so I think that Joe Biden should start out these these things by just saying, look, Donald Trump, you are the law and order right now. If there's lack of law and order, that's on you. That's your fault. I'm not in office. I haven't been in. I was the vice president. And that was years and years ago. There's nothing to do with me. How are you going to blame but, me and the yeah. Democrats and whatever? Say that and then turn around and say, and these are the things that we got to do to restore law and order and talk right. about the the, you know, the policies which Joe Biden supports, which, you know, I don't think are necessarily far enough, right? Maybe he can talk about moving further on that end. But, you know, at least start advancing a conversation. That right. would be that would be further than what Donald Trump is is doing. There is definitely a double standard there with Donald Trump because you can hear him right now. He's calling out state governors and saying, well, you're the person in charge. You're the person at the top. So if things go wrong, it's your fault, right? He's blaming them. And yet he's mm -hmm. in that same position. He's essentially the governor of the country, right? That's what the president is, is you're the, you're the, the top executive, executive person right. for the whole country. But somehow when the things go wrong, it's not his fault. Then he, you know, it's, we've seen how he people, blames yeah. the people around him. The buck stops with you people, but it doesn't stop with him as well. He sees that as, oh, this is the failings of the people around me. Right. And, and it's unbelievable that Donald Trump, in, in my opinion, at least, is completely ridiculous that he's just able to completely get away with that. He Again, he is the law and order right now. So right. failings yeah. are his fault. And Joe Biden should highlight that. I think I think that he should. I think that, to be fair, right, I think that Joe Biden's campaign, or at least a strategist in his campaign, I think that part of the concern here actually does have to do with, well, if you try to hammer in a law and order message, then that's going to be against the Black Lives Matter movement. And I do agree. Like, there's a like if you vocally start yelling law and order, I do think that that would probably, you know, you're going to piss off a lot of the, the Democratic base for sure. But if you just point out, I think there is a way to sort of balance that. Just point out, well, hold, Donald Trump, you're the law and order. You're failing right now. Yeah, you're failing right now because there's there's a reason why people are on the streets. There's a reason right. why. And it's the same reason why you turned around and went to Kenosha. Same reason. Right. You know, you turned around, and went to Kenosha and you didn't even try to talk to the family of Jacob Blake. Like, you're not there to heal. You're not there to help. You're there to stand in, say, law and order, law and order, power, boot, and then not do right. anything about it. So Yeah, the law and order tact, I think, could work, but you have to – because the truth is everybody, I think, wants some form of law and order. The people who are protesting the street – well, I mean, there's a small percentage of the population that, that you know, doesn't. But uh, overall, I think – even the people protesting want law and order. They just want to be included in that law and order. They want to right? be included they want the, in the they law. They want laws that work for them. Exactly. So that they, when they go to the streets, the laws are benefiting them, not working against them. So in some sense, you know, they all want law and order. They just don't want to be the one. They don't want to be on the losing end when the law doesn't. Yeah. Well, you're not part of our law and order. You're you're separate from things. You know, well, that's unfortunately, what people don't want. Unfortunately, that's what so many people mean when they say law and order. They mean law and order for me. They mean law and right. order for a certain class of people, a certain type of people who look a certain way oftentimes. Right. And they don't mean law in in the universal sense. They don't mean expanding, uh, you know, truly e expanding the franchise, like in a meaningful sense, like making sure that everybody can vote safely. Right. They're turning around trying to right. get rid of voting machines. They don't mean trying to truly expand order for everybody because there's no order when there's police officers shooting on the streets that's not order that's not right. law that's disorder that's anarchy police right. shooting people that's anarchy if you were ensuring people's needs if you were making sure that police were truly working for people in their community then people wouldn't be out on the streets so you want to talk about bringing in guns bringing in more boots bringing in a bigger boot to stomp down on protest right. that's not going to fix the problem it's just going to lead to more tension. Even if you're able to stop it for one night, two nights, three nights, maybe even a year, more tension builds up.
You know, you're just pushing down on that on that spring. You're pushing down on those gears, and eventually things are going to snap one way or the other. Something's going to break. Something's going to bust, and right. things are going to end up a whole lot worse if you don't actually try to solve the 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 root of the problem. Yeah. And there's so yes. many people who don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about solving the root of the, the thing. And it's always, it's always, Chris, it's always the same people who want to bring in the military, want to bring in the boot who they love to lick, which, or I should say, which they love to lick. They're the same people who deny the problem, right? Even if you're sitting right. here thinking to yourself, like, well, I don't agree with all the demands that they, that they make. You have to think to yourself in terms of like, <laughs> just like civil order. You have to think, well, they're upset about something. They're upset about right. something, so something needs to change. You can debate, right. and you know, I, I'm generally I like to think that I'm, you know, I'll, I'll be open to exactly how you have that debate, right? But if you're not willing to at least admit that something is wrong, mm -hmm. I don't know what to tell you at this point, man. I really don't like. Yeah, because <laughs> I don't think this is just going to fizzle out. I mean, I think the message has gotten out there, and enough people, um, you know, realize that. If if this just kind of fizzles out and ends, it's just going to be back to business as usual, right? We're just going mm -hmm. to go back to the same problems. And I think there's a there's strong enough voices out there that don't want to go back to that. And it's even it's even spread out to the you know what you would consider more mainstream voters that uh, for a lot of this they didn't see this before. It's now been exposed. And so I I think that this is the kind of thing where it's like I can't even imagine if Trump wins re-election what that four years will be like, because I don't see the protests stopping, you know, under that, that whole time. And, and things could escalate into a bad situation. A really bad, a really bad situation. I mean, I, I worry, right? I worry, Chris, like if Donald Trump wins reelection and doesn't try to do anything to fix anything at all, I mean, what does this which mean? Which he won't, yeah. It, right, which he won't at all. I mean, His base would see that as weakness and, and betrayal, weakness. you know. Yeah, and I – yeah, something's going to break somewhere and – Because right now I feel like people have this hope, right? People who have – are, you know, especially people on the bottom – well, at least there's November, right? And once November's not there anymore as that option – then it beca you take that hope and it, it becomes, becomes hopeless. And, and that's when I think things could definitely escalate. So, some of the biggest protests of the Trump administration were at the beginning when people realized like, oh, sh like this guy got in. Whoa. You mm -hmm. know, uh, I mean, you right. remember the women's march. Now, a lot of people were upset about the women's march and it definitely didn't protest the kinds of I mean, it, it, it didn't have like a clear policy message. Right. Like lots of criticisms right. there. But the number of people that they got on the streets, damn, that was a lot of people. Imagine right. that many people getting on the streets with a specific policy agenda, with a mm -hmm. specific thing of like, man, F those policemen, like, right. look, look what's happening right now. And Donald Trump saying, well, I'm not going to do anything about it. It could get really bad. It could get really, really ugly. And I, I do worry. I do worry that like, you know – Things could fall apart really, really fast. I'll just leave it. I'll just say that. Like things could fall apart really, really, really fast. And we see that throughout history. Big societies that you think are going to last forever. There's just one day and things go boom. Things right. start lighting up. And I look, I'm not I, I'm not overly pessimistic. Right. Like <laughs> I do think that we're we're going to make it through. At least I hope. Uh, but it's not going to be easy. Right. Like some people think it's going to be easy. Things are just going to necessarily happen and oh well donald trump is going to go away and then the, the reason why donald trump got elected in the first place that's also going to go away and no no it requires a lot no. and there's a lot of people out there also who just want to get rid of donald trump who think that once donald trump is gone right then everything's better everything's back to fine and well we can just go along our dandy way and we don't need to think about politics anymore no that's when we need to start if donald trump loses well then you need to start thinking about politics more than you were before when you when donald trump right. was in there because right. that means that now according to you right you're the person who you know whoever it is right if you, if you think that getting rid of donald trump is like super important like and, and that joe biden's going to do better well then now you have an opportunity to start doing things right, right. according to all the biden voters out there right mm -hmm. so n then once joe biden gets in then you should think that now i need to start paying attention to politics more now i need to start moving on right. policy even more than ever before yeah and because i think most of yeah. biden's term is just going to be getting us back to where we were when trump started 
right? So um, yeah. I wonder what the primary like. Let's let's sort of engage in hypothetical thinking for a few minutes here.